this should be dry by now and that looks like it's rock hard I'm going to use a sanding block, a cork sanding block and start off with uh, 120 grade wet and dry paper just to get the, uh, the bulk of it off the, the top of the wheel to get it down to a relatively smooth profile or level profile then I'm going to go on to a 360 grade wet and dry and then 1200 when I get to the 360 I might start using a bit of water with the wet and dry paper just so I don't get the paper clogging up with all the, the dust that's coming off the resin so here goes Now you can see the upstand that I made here earlier because the, we had that big crack or the, the piece came out of the wheel around around the uh, the center of the wheel here. Um, as you can see because I overfilled it I've got enough material to work with to remove and that same again it's gone hard. So I'm going to actually um, reshape this and I'll let you see the entire process because it may look difficult but it's not as difficult as it seems. So the first thing I've got to do is establish one area which is a starting point because I know the wheel around both sides is flat and uh, comes around in a curve I'm going to file across here just to get a starting point so I can work from there and develop redevelop the shape again I had to go into the file here because some of the material is hard and you can also use a flat file or a round file to reshape certain parts of the, the wheel if necessary. I've finished here. I can see the edge of where the original crack was. So I've got the material nice and flat right across here. And that gives me a great starting point because I know that's, uh, that's flat and I can develop the shape again around the inside and the outside of the centre of the wheel here. Um, because I've got an area here that I can work from that is going to stay there right till the end. So I'm going to keep going. Now with um, with files you'll find you'll get some which have got a rough side on uh, each side and some of them have got a smooth side. The, the reason for the smooth side is if you're working in an area where you say don't want to remove material from there such as like this you want to remove the area the material from this area here it just allows the file to only remove material that you want to have removed and the smooth side won't dig into another area so it really acts as a support and as you're filing away and you, you, what, what you don't want to do is, to, is concentrate too much on the look of the one area stop every now and then and just have a, a look at the overall shape around the wheel and you might find that it looks a little bit different than when you're focusing on that one spot altogether. So at this stage it's going fairly well. I've got a little bit of a lump through here to remove and the smooth side of the file isn't digging into the, the frame of the wheel there. Now I'm coming close to the shape I need so as you can see I'm just going to be removing sections of the resin where I have to get that the proper shape. So I might only be pushing in one direction. I'll I'll file it once or twice and then I'll dust it off just to make sure I'm getting the right shape and I don't take too much material off. Now I might just work this outside area here. As you can see, the smooth edge of the file which I've had facing downwards, it just sat on the, on the other material as a guide and it didn't dig into the wheel. So now I can turn it the other way and use the flat side and the smooth side against what I've done and I can shape this piece on the arm here. So as you can see it's already starting to take shape. Now if you find your um, your file clogs up a little from uh, if you especially if you're working with resins or plastics just get a wire brush and uh, brush across the file itself and you can remove all your the bits that have really ingrained themselves into the file. I'm not sure if you can see uh, what I can see here there's an original part of the steering wheel there and just over here there's a little bit showing through again so I can already see that this is where the crack was and the material was in there so I don't have too much material 
The reason why I'm being so pre precise in this area is because when this goes back on the car, it's going to be sitting over a sleeve. The sleeve on this one will be sitting on the inside and it'll be the sleeve sits level with the outside of the wheel also. So that's why I'm trying to get a nice precise finish through here, also around the, the center of the wheel here and also on the inside here too. Now I'm going to use my multi-tool on the inside of the wheel here. Obviously I can't get a file in there um, and that's a good, a good reason for using one of these multi-tools. They've just got so many uses. Right, so that's all done. Now, as you can see, that piece that chipped out um, previously has been refilled again with some new resin and that actually looks pretty good. I've still yet have to smooth it down with some uh, finer grade wet and dry, but we've got our steering wheel back into shape. There you go. So there you have it, you've seen the process of repairing the, the wheel, and uh, geez, the colour almost matches. So um, what I'm going to do now is give it a rub back with wet and dry, the, uh, the finer grade, a bit of water, and prepare it for paint.